Hello everyone. I am Asha Achen, Ashtam Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Government Engineering College, Hassan. So now let's discuss the fourth session of first module that is building materials of the subject building materials and construction 18 CV 34. So in this, let's continue with the first module. So in the fourth session, we are going to discuss about mortar. The term mortar is used to indicate a paste prepared by adding the required amount of water to a mixture of binding material like cement or lime and fine aggregate like sand. Classification of mortar. Mortars are classified based on the following factors. First one, bulk density. According to the bulk density, mortars are classified as heavy mortars and lightweight mortars. Heavy mortars, the mortars whose bulk density is greater than or equal to 15 kN per meter cube are known as heavy mortars and they are prepared from heavy quartz or other sands. Next is lightweight mortar. The mortar whose bulk density is less than 15 kN per meter cube are known as lightweight mortar. And they are prepared from light porous sands from pumice and other fine aggregates. Next classification is based on the kind of binding material. The kind of binding material for a mortar is selected based on working conditions, hardening, temperature, moisture conditions, etc. According to kind of binding material, mortars are classified as follows. First one, lime mortar. In this type of mortar, lime is used as binding material. The lime may be fat lime or hydrated lime. The fat lime shrinks to a great extent and hence it requires about two to three times its volume than sand. The lime should be slaked before use. This mortar is undesirable for waterlogged areas or in damp situations. For hydraulic lime, the proportion of lime to sand by volume is about one is to two or so. This mortar should be consumed within one hour after mixing. It possesses more strength and can be used in damp situations. The lime mortar has a high plasticity and it can be placed easily. It possesses good cohesiveness with other surfaces and shrinks very little. It is sufficiently durable, but it hardens slowly. It is generally used for lightly loaded structures above ground parts of building. Next type of mortar is Surki mortar. This type of mortar is prepared by using fully Surki instead of sand or by replacing half of sand in lime mortar. The powder of Surki should be fine enough to pass BIS number 9 sieve and the residue should not be more than 10% by weight. The Surki mortar is used for ordinary masonry works of all kinds in foundation and superstructure. But it cannot be used for plastering or pointing works. Since Surki is likely to disintegrate after some time. Next type is a cement mortar. In this type of mortar, the cement is used as binding material. Depending upon the strength required and importance of work, the proportion of cement to sand by volume varies from 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 6 or more. It should be noted that surki and cinder are not chemically inert. Substances and ends, they cannot be used as adulterants with matrix as cement. Thus, the sand only can be used to form cement mortar. The proportion of cement with respect to sand should be determined 
with due regard to the specific durability and working conditions. The cement mortar is used where a mortar of high strength and water resistant property is required, such as underground constructions, water saturated soils, etc. Next type is gauged mortars. To improve the quality of lime mortar and to achieve early strength, the cement is sometimes added to it. This process is known as gauging. It makes the lime mortar economical, strong and dense. The usual proportion of cement to lime by volume is about 1 is to 6 to 1 is to 8. It is also known as the composite mortar or lime cement mortar and it can also be formed by the combination of clay. This mortar may be used for bedding and for thick brick walls. Next type is gypsum mortar. These mortars are prepared from gypsum binding materials such as building gypsum and anhydrite binding materials. Next third one is nature of application. According to the nature of application, the mortars are classified into two categories. Bricklaying mortar. The mortars for bricklaying are intended to be used for brickwork on walls. Depending upon the working conditions and type of construction, the composition of masonry mortars with respect to the kind of binding material is decided. Second one is uh, finishing mortars. These mortars include commonly plastering work and mortars for developing architectural or ornamental effects. The cement or lime is generally used as binding material for ordinary plastering mortars for decorative finishing. The mortars are composed of suitable materials with the consideration of mobility, water retention, resistance to atmospheric actions, etc. Next type is special mortars. Following are the various types of special mortars which are used for certain conditions. First one, fire resistant mortars. This mortar is prepared by adding aluminous cement to the fine crust powder of fine bricks. The usual proportion is one part of aluminous cement to two parts of powder of fire bricks. This mortar is fire resistant and it is therefore used with fire bricks for lining furnaces, fireplaces, ovens, etc. Next second one is lightweight mortars. This mortar is prepared by adding materials such as sawdust, wood powder, etc. to the lime mortar or cement mortar. Other materials which may be added are asbestos fiber, jute fiber, coir, etc. This mortar is used in the soundproof and heatproof constructions. Third type is packing mortars. To pack oil wells, special mortars possessing the properties of high homogeneity, water resistance, predetermined setting time, ability to form solid waterproof plugs in cracks and voids of rocks, resistance to subsoil, water pressure, etc. have to be formed. The varieties of packing mortars include cement sand, cement loam, and cement sand loam. The composition of packing mortar is decided by taking into consideration of hydrogeologic conditions, packing methods, and type of timbering. Next type is sound absorbing mortars. To reduce the noise level, the sound absorbing plaster is formed with the help of sound absorbing mortars. The bulk density of such a mortar varies from 6 to 12 kN per meter cube. And the binding materials employed in this composition may be Portland cement, lime, gypsum, slag, etc. The aggregates are selected from lightweight porous material such as pumice, cinders, etc. Next type is X-ray shielding mortars. This type of mortar is used for providing the plastering coat 
to walls, unsealing of X-ray cabinets. It is heavy type of mortar with bulk density over 22 kilonewton per meter cube. The aggregates are obtained from heavy rock and suitable admixtures are added to enhance the property of such a mortar. Now moving on to the requirements of mortar or what are the properties of good mortar. The important properties of good mortar mix are mobility, placeability and water retention. The term mobility is used to indicate the consistency of mortar mix which may range from stiff to fluid. The mobility of mortar mix depends on the composition of mortar and the mortar mixes to be used for masonry work finishing work, etc. are made sufficiently mobile. The placeability or the ease with which the mortar mix can be placed with minimum cost in a thin and uniform layer over the surface depends on the mobility of the mortar. The placeability of the mortar mix should be such that a strong bond should be developed with the surface of the bed. A good mortar Make sure process the ability of retaining adequate humidity during transportation and laying over the porous beds. If water retention power of the mortar mix is low, it separates into layers during transportation. And when, when it comes into contact with porous bed, such as brick, wood, etc., it gives away water to the surface. Thus the mortar becomes poor in amount of water and the remaining water proves to be insufficient for its hardening. Hence the required strength of mortar will not be achieved with such a mortar mix. Following are the properties of a good mortar. It should be capable of developing good addition with the building units such as bricks, stones, etc. It should be capable of developing the design stresses. It should be capable of resisting penetration of rainwater. It should be cheap. It should be durable. It should be easily workable. So with this, we end this session over here.